In this example, we're asked to investigate the sequence defined recursively by these two equations. The recursion relation here is given by this one. a sub n plus 1 is equal to 1 half of the previous term plus 6. So add 6 first and then divide by 2 to divide the sum by 2. And when it says to investigate, the instructions in the notes are a little more clear. We want to do two things. We want to show that this sequence converges by using the monotone convergence theorem. This is one of the tools that we just built for ourselves, and we want to use it. So show that this sequence converges. And then, once we know it converges, we can try to find the limit. So that's step one, is to show that it converges. And then number two is, if possible, try to find the limit. Remember, the monotone convergence theorem just tells us that our sequence converges, so that means it has a limit. It doesn't necessarily tell us what the limit is. Well, the theorem doesn't tell us what the limit is. Sometimes it's easy to find the limit and sometimes not. In this one, we will be able to find it. Um, because it's defined recursively, we'll use that to our advantage. So um, let's go then, let's do it. To do the monotone sequence theorem, or the monotone convergence theorem, to prove it, or to use it, I should say, we are going to need a tool called mathematical induction. And this is a little weird, but it's not the hardest thing to understand. So the idea is that we kind of bootstrap our way or climb up a ladder. And so I'm going to draw a ladder, because why not, if we're talking about a ladder. The idea of mathematical induction is that we want to prove that a statement is true for all values of n. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom, where n equals 1, and we're going to climb all the way up until, you know, for all n, so until we reach infinity, which is obviously impossible, so, but we're going to cover all values of n. And so the first step of the induction process is to prove what's called the base case. So this, the idea here is that we have to get on the ladder. You have to step onto the ladder. And so when n equals 1, we show that our statement is true, or maybe sometimes this n is equal to 2 or 3 or 4. It doesn't have to be 1 always, but you, you prove the first case, though. So when n is equal to 1, uh, for the way I've written this, you get on the ladder. Okay, now the next step is called the induction hypothesis. So you assume, once you're on the ladder, you assume that you're on, you know, you're on the ladder, but you don't necessarily stay on the first step. You say, okay, maybe you've climbed up to the kth step. So at this point, it doesn't matter what k is, but maybe you've climbed all the way up to the kth step. By the way, k could be 1, so maybe you're just standing on the first rung of the ladder still. But your hypothesis is that you're on the ladder. And it's not a crazy hypothesis because you've just proved with the base case that you're already on the ladder. So this is not the craziest thing. What's, you know, a little interesting about it is that you assume you're anywhere on the ladder. Just because you're on, you get on the first step doesn't mean you stay on the first step. You could be anywhere on this ladder. And then the next step, and this is the key to the whole thing, the induction step, this is to show that once, if we know we're on the kth step here, this bold orange step, then what we need to prove is that we can climb to the next step. So that we can we can step up from the kth step to the k plus first step. Okay, and that's the induction step. That's what we're going to use here. Um, this idea might sound kind of crazy, but again, it's not that crazy. You will, we'll see in action, it's pretty simple. Um, but because this k, and this is the whole key to right here, assuming that you're somewhere on the ladder, because the k was arbitrary, what this says is that you can always climb up to the next step. No matter what step you're on, you could be on the 12 billionth step and you can go to the next one. And so that's the idea of induction. If you can prove that, then that means it's true for all n. You can, you, you can keep climbing for as long as you want to on this ladder. Okay? So we're going to use induction to show two things. Remember, we our goal here is to show that our sequence defined recursively like this, that our sequence is both increasing and bounded. Well, I mean, we don't know if it's increasing, but we assume by the formula it could be increasing or decreasing. But it has to be monotone and it has to be bounded. And so we're going to prove both of these things by induction. So let's start with um, the monotone portion. And I'll leave, I'll do this one on this page so that we can see the induction steps as we go along. So the monotone portion, we want to prove that either a n plus 1 is greater than a sub n or that a n plus 1 is less than a sub n. Okay, and we need to know which of these to use. I kind of indicated that it might be increasing, and let's check. So remember, in our recursive definition, we're told that a1 is equal to 2, and we're told that the next term is always given by this formula. 
So you add 6 and then divide by 2. So this therefore tells us that a sub 2 is equal to 1 half of a sub 1. So 1 half of 2 plus 6. And 2 plus 6 is 8, so this is 4. And obviously 4 is greater than 2, right? And so this tells us that for a sub 2, a sub 2 is greater than a sub 1. And this indicates that our sequence is probably increasing. Okay, now what we've just done is actually shown the base case. We've shown that the first, we've gone up the first step. We've gone from the first term of our sequence to the second term and we increased. So that's step one, that's our base case. Check mark. All right, the next step of induction is to just make the hypothesis. Okay, write it down. We know we're on the ladder, so let's just assume we're on some rung of the ladder. And so step two is to assume that a sub k plus 1 is greater than a sub k for some k greater than or equal to 1. Now, because we include greater than or equal to 1, we know that this statement is not crazy because we already proved that it's true for k equal to 1. Okay? We just showed it. That's, that's the importance of the base case. You have to do the base case. And so our induction hypothesis is just that, all right, we've got this true for some k bigger than or equal to 1, Hopefully this number is bigger than 1, but we at least know it's true for 1. Okay, and now step 3. Step 3 is to now use this. This is the key here. I, I didn't focus on this when I was reading it. But the key statement here is that you have to use the previous induction step. Use the induction hypothesis to actually show that the next one is true. So let's try it. So we get to assume that ak plus 1 is greater than ak. That was our induction hypothesis, so we've just used it. That's number two. Now, if you add six to both sides of this equation, you're not going to change the symbol, right? You might change, you're going to change the values, but just by properties of addition, that this is true. AK plus one plus six is greater than AK plus six because these were greater than each other. And then the same deal, if we divide both sides by two or multiply by a half, then it also preserves this greater than symbol. So 1 half ak plus 1 plus 6 is greater than 1 half ak plus 6. And at this point, now we notice, okay, look at, look what we've got here. This is the term, the recursive definition for ak plus 1. And if this is the term for ak plus 1, if you swap out k for k plus 1 down here, then this term is ak plus 2. Okay, and so all this taken together shows that given, given our hypothesis, given this hypothesis in step two that we wrote down here, then AK plus two is greater than AK plus one. And so this shows, so now by induction, by mathematical induction, this shows that our sequence is increasing. And this is increasing for all N, right? And that's what we mean when we say increasing. We mean it's increasing for all values of N. All right, so we're halfway to our monotone sequence there. We got the monotone part. Now we need bounded, right? We need the bounded part. All right, so for the bounded part, there are a couple ways to do this. Um, let's write it down. We need an upper bound. It's not clear what the upper bound should be uh, necessarily, but remember our formula for the recursion was that ak plus 1 is equal to 1 half times the previous one plus 6. All right, and this number here um, turns out uh, we can try to bound it by this. So let's show by our base case here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um, say here um, as a claim that our a n is less than or equal to six for all n. So I'm gonna claim this, and I'm just looking at this formula. If you add six divided by two over and over again, um, you could also write out the first few terms in in the book. When they do this problem, they write out the first nine terms of the sequence. And so I recommend actually doing that. It's, it's an interesting thing to see how the recursion works. Um, but for us, let's just say, okay, just based on the formula, we're going to make a guess here. We're going to make a guess. So our base case, number one, A1 is equal to 2. That's less than 6, right? And so our base case is like trivial here. So A1 is less than 6. So base case is true just by A1. That didn't even use the recursion formula, right? or the recurrence relation, it's called. Step two 
is to assume right, that AK is less than 6 for some K. And again, this is not a crazy assumption. I wrote my symbol the wrong way. So this is for some K greater than or equal to 1. This is not a crazy assumption because we know that it's true for K equal to 1. All right, so there's our, that's called our induction hypothesis. You just write that down. But you have to do the base case first before you write that down. Now step three is to use this, okay? So we get to say since a sub k is less than six, then we get to work with this. We can do anything we want as long as we, you know, as long as it's mathematically legitimate. And so one thing we could do is add six to both sides. Now why would I want to do that? Because I'm looking at this formula right here, this formula for the recurrence relation, and this equation has a k plus six on the right-hand side. Remember, we have to show that a k plus one is also less than six, given, given our assumption, right? So I'm gonna add six to both sides. And so what I get now is that a k plus six is less than 12, right? Just add six to both sides, six plus six is 12. And then that takes care of this part. Then you can probably guess the next step. That's gonna to be to multiply both sides by a half because we need the half to get the left-hand side to be a k plus one. All right, and so the next step is then, if we multiply by a half, a k plus six, this is gonna be less than 12 over two, that's of course six, but look what we've got here. This is the formula for a k plus one. All right, and so what we've shown then is that a k plus one is less than six whenever a k is, So whenever a k is less than six, and we know that a k is less than six when k is one, and so by induction, that means that our sequence is always less than six. So by induction, our a sub n is always less than or equal to six. I did kind of a strict bound here. We didn't need that, right? So you could replace all these with equals. It doesn't change anything. All right, the less than sign, I mean, maybe I shouldn't have filled all those in because it was actually useful, but um, okay, so this means now, so now that this, all of this means by our two induction proofs, and therefore the monotone convergence theorem applies. All we needed to show is that our sequence was both monotone, in this case increasing, and bounded, in this case bounded above. All right, and thus it has a limit. All right, now the question is, what is that limit? So right now we've shown that, that our sequence is convergent. We don't know what it converges to, although we probably have a guess based on our discussion about the monotone convergence theorem, um, the proof of it, I should say, and everything that we just worked out. This number six is not just any bound. This looks like it's probably the least upper bound, um, but we need to show that, right? So we need to show that that's the lowest upper bound that we could possibly get. Um, it worked out really nicely though, right? So let, let's let's work it out. So um, it turns out we don't even need to know that it is. What we want to consider, because this sequence is defined recursively, so if, when we're going to actually take the limit now, we want to take the limit of our a n plus 1 term. And the reason for that is because of the recursion formula. a n plus 1, in one, in one, on one hand, this equals l, equals the limit, right? So as n increases, a sub n plus 1 approaches the limit just like a sub n would approach the limit. So that's equal to the limit. Again, we know the limit exists, so we can write that this equals L. All right? On the other hand, we have a formula, recursion formula, recur recurrence relation for a n plus 1. And so in this case, our limit of a n plus 1 equals the limit of a half a n plus 6 by our definition, right, the recurrence relation. And then all of this is continuous, and so we can put our limit inside, and this becomes one half, limit a sub n plus six, okay? But this is L, right? And so this equals one half L plus six. And so what we've just done is we've shown that limit a sub n plus one equals two different things. On one hand, it equals L. On the other hand, it equals one half L plus six. 
But this limit exists, right? So if the limit didn't exist, then maybe this wouldn't tell us anything. But we know it exists by our monotone convergence theorem. So in other words, we couldn't have started with this argument because we, don't, we wouldn't have known that the limit actually existed. We do know it exists now, so we set these equal to each other. Okay, and then to actually <coughs> solve this, what we do, multiply both sides by 2, right? So 2L is equal to L plus 6, and then we just subtract L. And so our limit, L, is indeed equal to 6.